Today I actually opted for some coffee, not tea, because it's been really hot here in Vancouver the last couple of days and I could barely sleep so I really needed this coffee. But enough coffee talk, let's get on with the actual content. Welcome back everyone, my name is Sophie and I'm a third year computer science and master of management student at the University of British Columbia. And welcome to episode three of Food for Thought. Um, today I've got some more awesome content for you guys, three pieces of content to be exact. The first piece of content is gonna be a tweet um, written by Michael Seibel, at MW Seibel. I'll put his twi uh, Twitter handle down here and in the description as well. Um, and then the second piece of content is gonna be a blog post by Seth Godin on Seth's blog, that's the name of his blog. Again, link in the description and it's titled Rejected! Exclamation mark. And then the third piece of content is going to be a tweet by Andrew Wilkinson, um, at a Wilkinson, again Twitter handle down here and in the description. Um, so yeah, we've got two tweets and a blog post today. The first tweet by Michael Seibel, I think you pronounce his name, um, I'm gonna read it out to you. So he, he replied to himself, but his first tweet uh, is In reality, customers are the gatekeepers of the startup world. If your product can get customers and retain customers, investors, including YC, will help will happily give you money. And then his own reply was, so if you want investment, don't ask for product feedback. Share your numbers and ask for money. If you want product feedback, try cold emailing potential users and founders who have tried and failed to solve a similar problem in the past. And I found this tweet to be quite powerful, um, especially since I myself am a, I'm I'm in the entrepreneurship game kind of and I'm a um, founding iOS engineer of the mindset startup if you guys don't know about that check out the previous video I made last Monday um, about my kind of entrepreneurship journey and how you guys can also start your own journey where I just kind of share some advice as well I'll leave a link or in the card up there and then I'll also link it down in the description as well but enough plugs let's get back to the um, actual tweet so for me um, this was quite insightful because a lot of the time um, when we go to investors or when startups go to investors and we kind of get their initial reactions and emotions um, on our product, we ask them for feedback. We ask them, okay, I can see that you're not 100% happy or why are you not giving us the, the funds that we're expecting? Um, what, what feedback do you have? How can we improve? And what this tweet says really nicely um, and that I feel like a lot of people need to think about, especially in the startup world, is that you can go to investors and ask them for the numbers that they expect, but asking them for feedback on how to reach those numbers is the wrong approach because yes, they can give you the feedback and the numbers they want so that you can get the funds from them that you want, but the feedback has to come from the customer because you're creating your product for the customer, not for the investor. So even though a lot of people ask the investors for feedback and how they think that you should improve your product, that's the wrong approach. You, should, you need to turn around, do a 180 and walk the other way and ask your customer how, who will actually be the end user of your product, how they want the product to be improved and what they expect from the product. So yeah, I just found that a, a, a really insightful um, yet simple tweet. The second piece of content is, as mentioned, the blog post by Seth Godin. If you guys don't know who Seth Godin is, um, go check him out as well. Um, but right now, I am a computer science student and recruiting season for next summer has started. It's the, it's every computer science student's favorite time of the year. It's so much fun just grinding lead code um, and algo experts. Um, but a lot of times when we do these technical coding interviews, we do end up getting rejected. So simply the title, rejected exclamation mark, of this blog post seemed quite enticing to me. And I was looking for some uh, encouraging words. And I think I found them. So I'm going to read you the blog post here. They didn't reject you. They rejected an application. They rejected a business plan. They rejected a piece of paper. They don't know you. And I feel when I read this blog post, it really resonated with me because we often hear the story of, oh, you're more than your application. Um, your application doesn't say everything about you. And that kind of phrase is kind of cliche in that interviewing world or application world. And we hear it all the time. But I feel like 
although we hear it that often, because we feel like it's cliche, we don't really take it to heart. But this blog post was quite, um, quite powerful for me because you can look at it at two ways. There's a message in this blog post to towards the companies or the investors again that you. Um, that are trying to kind of read your application and assess whether you're a good fit as a candidate but then there's also a message in this blog post towards the candidate and the um from the applicant from the applicant's perspective so from the candidate's perspective the thing that they can learn from this is that yeah you're more than an application it's your paper was rejected it's possibly how you presented yourself that you were uh, rejected but it's not your personality it's not you personally don't take it personally and that's kind of the cliche thing that we've heard before but the really interesting thing for this blog post was the business perspective so what businesses can learn from this perspective uh, from this blog post and in my opinion it um one big point is that for businesses, they need to realize that the application kind of processes that they put in place, these paper applications or interview applications, online applications, they don't tell them everything about a person. And I feel like that's a way less cliche kind of piece of insight um, from, again, from the business's point of view, that that's something that they need to keep in mind as a business when recruiting people that that application that the applicant sent in doesn't tell them anything about the person actually behind that application necessarily. And then the third piece of content, um, as I mentioned, is a tweet by Andrew Wilkinson. And I'm going to read it to you as well because again, it's short and sweet. And he wrote, our brains are designed for one to three tasks per day, a social group of less than 50, most time spent silent in nature doing a task. No awareness of anything happening outside of five square kilometers. No wonder we're all miserable. Yeah, that's... I mean, just reading that makes you feel kind of miserable. And um, it definitely did spark some kind of emotion in me when I read it the first time. And I, I decided to share it with you guys, not to make you guys miserable or anything. But because I thought that... It was interesting because um, I started wondering to what extent can we actually change these factors or to what ex extent can we adapt from these factors? How how can we, because right currently we're living in a really busy, fast paced, modern world, um, especially our generation really expects um, fast returns on our work and like short term um, gratification and all of that stuff. Um, so how can we adapt these apparently innate four features about ourselves to the more modern world? And is that possible in the first place? And second of all, if so, then ha how? What's the best approach? So yeah, those were the three pieces of content for today. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed it. These were pretty short pieces, but um, I feel like they were quite powerful. If you guys find any interesting content, leave links in the description um, and maybe I'll read it and actually talk about it in one of these videos. Um, and as always, if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, hit the notification bell to stay tuned for the next episode of this series, and take care, and I'll see you soon.